When I start to work on a project, I read the grain of the wood that's come from the lumber yard and uh, it has rough sawn surface or a plain surface. But what I try to do when I'm reading the grain, I want to explain what reading the grain is really because it's my interpretation of what's going on inside the wood. And this is determined by the growth of the tree as it grows from the earth, it reaches up to the sky, the sun's warming the leaves, the growth is taking place on the outside of the tree and each year the tree grows and it puts on an extra layer on the outside. So I have to interpret what's inside that wood before I start because it makes my work more efficient and more economic. If I can understand what's going to affect the hand tool that I work the wood with, then I can shorten my time uh, working against the grain as we call it and I'll explain that as we go. So sometimes uh, we do hit grain that rises up against us and we have to knock it down somehow, get it level, get it smooth. But then we also have to work with the chisels, work with the plane, work with the saws to see what's going to happen. To do that best, we have to understand the grain. So we're going to read the grain as we work along through a project. So let me show you what I'm looking for when I look at a piece of wood. I've got several pieces of wood back here different pieces, different types of tree, and each one has its own idiosyncrasy. There are no two trees, even within the species, the grain will be different with each one. But when we get to trees like you, which is the one on the far right there, and we move over to the left, we've got very uh, undulating grain in some oak. We have all these different grains that we work with, and we want these grains because they're what give it the characteristic when we're making the piece of furniture. We use these pieces, to, these, um, in, these grains, to decorate the piece. We use them for their stability. We're looking for all manner of things that will give our pieces, whatever it's fur, whether it's furniture, a boat, a guitar, an instrument of some kind. We're looking at these pieces of wood differently for each particular application we're going to use in the piece. I'm going to go now. I want to look at this simple piece. This is just a piece of pine. I picked it up off the floor. I want to look at this with you because I want you to understand what I'm looking for when I look at this piece of wood. So when I see this piece of wood, I want to make, say, a box out of this. This is obvious. This to any woodworker is a knot. But what we don't always realize is that that knot is the, is the root of the branch that's coming off the tree. So this is my branch here. So I'm looking for this branch because this branch branches off in a direction and what it causes within this sphere this area around here you can see these onion skins here this onion shape of wood and what that is is the compression and contention of the wood so one is stretching on one side the other is compressing under the weight of the branch on the other so these things take place in all woods whether it's oak whether it's a, a, an exotic species or something like that this is happening throughout the wood Let's take a look at this area here first because on the edge of the, on the face of the board here, we can see this coming up here. When I start to plane this, if I surface plane this, I can run into a problem straight away. Now I'm going to plane this with a very sharp edged smoothing plane over the top of the knot and I can scarcely tell the difference when I hit the knot. But if I take a heavy set plane like this one here, this, this surface here is smooth, but as I transferred from here, I was going with the grain here because the grain was rising up this way. When I hit this side of the wood, it's rising up this way. That's when I hit the snag. So watch what happens here. I hit the knot and that is causing me a severe problem, but what it's doing on the out outcut of the knot here I've got this torn grain here that I didn't get with the super sharp smooth this is still a sharp plane but it's heavy set and what happens is I'm now going against the grain because this grain is rising up around the branch it's supporting the branch that's what it's supposed to do so I see this beforehand and I say to myself I have to take very shallow cuts or I have to come from this direction change direction, take the very same plane and on this side of the cut it's as smooth as can be on this side but 
Then on the opposite side, what was smooth before is now torn out. So I've ripped this grain out by its root. I've pulled it out because the heavy set on the plane is going underneath the grain. It doesn't have time to cut and it rips it from the body of wood. So I think that's important. Those are different elements. This is the branch sweeping off. This is the way the tree grows and we have to work within the natural properties of the wood to effect the best cut. So in this case, I would usually go with a super smooth shallow set on my plane like this and work down the level all the way across like this. That will get both sides of it smooth, but no, the one on the other side is not going to be as good as the one on this side. Let's take a look at this one here. Here's another knot here. This is where the, the branch, this is what we call a dead knot. This actually is a dead knot too, because watch this. This, I can see this is popping inside. It's no longer connected to the, bay, the main body of wood. You'll come across some uh, knots that are actually still tied in with the main body of wood. Those are living knots or live knots. This is a dead knot. And the more I move this, the more the fibers will allow me to release it. So when I'm looking at a piece of wood, I'm also looking at whether these different layers, let's take a look at this here. This one looks as though it's at the top of these and these are all stacking up this way. In actuality, this is the lowest point. This is from the dead center or nearer to the center of the tree. How do I know that? I look at these lines radiating. So this is the near to the center of the tree. This is the outside. But because of the knot, this is brought to the top. So this is actually underneath this layer of growth. This is underneath this layer of growth, underneath this layer of growth, this layer and this layer till I get to here. So technically this has to be planed in this direction. But when I get to this side, I've got the problem. This is where you start to see why we try to interpret, we read the grain and that gives us the best way of looking at the wood so that we lose as little time as possible. And it's about economy in this case. I've got a variety of different woods here. I've got different species of tree because each one has its own idiosyncrasy. And even within the species, they're going to be different. You can see where, when I was talking about the knot, when I was talking about the layers of the grain, how it changes. Well, it changes because the branches are growing on the trees. And that's what gives us the, uh, the texture within the tree where the grain is growing around the knot, where the tree starts with a broad base and goes narrower to the top. That's the outer layer being, being laid on top of the inner layers, on top of the inner layers. I've got a piece of cherry here that I picked out. It shows the knot coming up here, another knot here. Those are the branches I was talking about. I've got layers here. One, I can see one layer on top of another layer on top of another. I have to work out whether one is underneath the piece or one is on top of the piece. In this case, this layer here comes to a point here and on this edge here, it goes off here. Again, another layer here, it goes off here. So because they come to a point, it tells me which direction to plane in. If I was to plane in this direction like this, I would get a very smooth passage with my plane and the wood would be super smooth. If I go against the grain and go in this direction, I know it will tear. Let me show you what I mean. because I think this helps me the most. If I go in this direction now, my wood is super smooth. This is silky smooth. This feels as smooth as any piece of glass. What happens if I go in the opposite direction? My plane is sharp, but if I go in this direction, now it could still work, but I doubt it. See here, it's, it's jumping, it's scudding over the surface and it's actually torn the grain in a very unpleasant way. In here, this is, my fingernail catches on it. It's no longer smooth. I went against the grain. If I can interpret that ahead of time as I did before, I will have super smooth wood and I'll save myself a lot of heartache when I come to planing surfaces. 
On the other hand, there are some woods like this one. This is a piece of wood I probably wouldn't even try to plane. I wouldn't hand plane this, I would use a scraper instead of a plane, simply because by my interpretation, this grain is waving in and out. It's an unusual uh, pattern for oak, but it's so uh, temperamental when I come to plane this, I know this would tear. So I look at the surface, I look at the sides, I look at the way the grain goes up and down. This is like uh, quilted inside the wood. It's like a quilted pattern. I know I can't plane this. If I can interpret that, I save time, I save wood, and I save myself a lot of agony when I'm working on the wood. So that will give you some idea, but what woods will plane well and what woods won't plane well? This is a piece of quarter sawn oak. How do I know that? I read the grain and I can see these are what we call medullary, medullary rays or ray cells and this is where the rays come from the very epicenter of the grain. So my grain in this case, I can see these rings. These are called growth rings, sometimes called annual, annual rings. But because they grow annually in certain countries, they may not grow annually in other countries. They may, if you were in the tropics, for instance, the tropics isn't, in uh, isn't controlled by winter and summer the same way we are. So I take my piece of wood here, just to show you what I mean. This is quarter sawn, this is oak, and this is probably any Quarter sawn wood is probably the most stable wood of all types of wood. So here, I can plane this grain in any direction and get a super smooth, this is so smooth. I'm gonna try and see what we get when I go in the opposite direction, because it's quarter sawn, and I get exactly the same feeling. So I've got this super smooth surface. I interpreted the grain I chose the wood for that reason. I'm making the frame of a door, I'm making a tabletop, something like that. I get this wonderful grain, I can plane it in either direction. I'm interpreting, I'm looking at the grain and I'm reading the grain, I'm reading inside. I'm reading the edges, I'm reading the surface. I can get to the core of what I want. That's the very inside of the tree. What's happening beneath the surface is what's uh, showing on the top, a bit like if you were watching a river and you saw a ripple on the surface of a river, you would know that there was something underneath the river's uh, surface that was causing this undulation. You'd see a branch down in the water, you'd see some rocks down on the bottom. This is exactly the same things. We're trying to look through the surface, not at the surface itself, because if we can do that, we can better understand the nature of the wood, what's going on inside each individual piece that we pick up and we make very economical movements when we're working with our hand tools.